We follow the order of service as found on page five. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto Thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against Thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we plead for refuge to Thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring Thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given Thine only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee, and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us and hath given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgiveth us all our sins. To them that believe on his name he giveth power to become the sons of God and hath promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. turn to Psalm 119. We read a portion of Psalm 119 beginning with the 49th verse. It's on page 959. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My hope in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. The arrogant mock me without restraint, but I do not turn from your law. I remember your ancient laws, O Lord, and I find comfort in them. Indignation grips me because of the wicked who have forsaken your law. Your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I lie. In the night I remember your name, O Lord, and I will keep your law. This has been my practice. I will obey your precepts. You are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. At midnight I rise to give you thanks for you righteous law. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. The earth is filled with your love, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. Glory be to the Father.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into your harvest, of your infinite mercy, give us true teachers and ministers of your word, and put your saving gospel in their hearts and on their lips, that they may truly fulfill your command and preach nothing contrary to your holy word, that we, being warned, instructed, nurtured, comforted, and strengthened by your heavenly word, may do those things which are well-pleasing to you and profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and governs with you and the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the cruel. So far, the Old Testament lesson. Our epistle lesson is found in Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning with the twelfth verse. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. So far, the epistle lesson. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Hallelujah. written in the seventh chapter of St. Matthew, beginning with the 15th verse. Again, our gospel lesson is from Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is speaking to people who already know God as their Savior and is speaking to deepen their understanding of the things of God. Jesus says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. 
away from me, you evildoers. Here ends the gospel. our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 12. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with hymn 396. text is found in the book of Numbers, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. Moses heard the people of every family wailing, each at the entrance to his tent. The Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their forefathers? Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me, give us meat to eat. 
I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you're going to treat me, put me to death right away. If I have found favor in your eyes, and do not my do not let my face, let me face my own room. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take of the spirit that is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat. We were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will eat it for not for you will not eat it for I'm sorry. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or five or ten or twenty days, but for a whole month. Until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it, because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, here I am among 600,000 men on foot and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, is the Lord's arm too short? You will now see whether or not what I say will come true for you. This is our text. Dear fellow redeemed, God is invisible. And so some people may have doubts about whether or not God really exists because they can't see him. There are people who desire to see a miracle and then reason that their life would be far different if they just simply saw a miracle. And here we need to keep in mind that we are saint and sinner at the same time. Our sinful nature is in conflict with our new man, and that conflict is ongoing all the time. We need to be on guard at all times so that we are not misled by our sinful nature. As for seeing a miracle, consider the children of Israel. They were led by Moses. They saw miracles. And yes, they saw even more than one miracle. Surely the dividing of the Red Sea was most impressive. And yet within a short space of time, the children of Israel were grumbling. The children of Israel saw the mountain smoke and shake when God spoke the Ten Commandments. And then in less than 40 days, they were worshiping a golden calf. As we look at the text before us today, we do all to keep in mind that you and I too are saint and sinner at the same time. The sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with each other. After crossing the Red Sea, the children of Israel were in a desert region. That means that natural supplies, things you can get from nature, natural supplies of food and water were scarce. And yes, the children of Israel grumbled. There was doubt about the Lord's ability to provide. Moses, too, had doubts. The Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? We note in our text the children of Israel complain to Moses and the Lord. Moses complains to the Lord, and the Lord answers with love. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at wailing, each at the entrance to his tent. The Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. How quickly the people forgot. 
They had been in Egypt and in slavery. The children of Israel in Egypt asked the Lord for help. And in God's good timetable, he brought his people out of Egypt. And then because they were in a desert region, the Lord provided them with manna to eat. The Lord was providing for his people one day at a time. However, it didn't take long for some of the people to crave other food. They wanted meat. They looked back at Egypt. And they looked back with really sugar-coated memory. They were now tired of just having manna. We are told the Lord became exceedingly angry. At one time I used to look at stories from those 40 years and think how foolish the children of Israel were during those 40 years. And then one day it occurred to me that I had the very same flesh and blood as the children of Israel. If we go back far enough, you and I all share the same ancestors. And as I thought about that, I realized I am no better than the children of Israel. Years ago, when there was still a Kmart, they had a series of ads that that featured a reporter interviewing people. The reporter would ask, what is your occupation? And in one of those ads, the person answered, I'm a professional fault finder. And by the way, I don't like your tie. The ads put a smile on my face. I thought they were clever. Sometimes, though, there is a serious element of truth in humor. <clears throat> I think those Kmart ads caught attention because most of us know people who are complaining about something, some more frequently than others. We complain because we need rain, and then when we get rain, we complain because it's raining. And if we complain about what the government is doing or not doing, we complain about people we know, perhaps some of them are relatives. We complain about the prices at the grocery store and my dad would sell cattle from time to time and listen to the price and, and, and he sold milk for a living and complain about the low price that he was refusing for the milk and how, pri how high it was in the store. We got all kinds of things we complain about. And one doesn't need to be a professional fault finder to complain. I am safe in saying, I think, rare is the person who does not complain. The Lord has provided us with food, clothing, and shelter. Never mind that some people have more stuff than you and I do. The Lord is still providing us with the very basics that we need. We can be content with food and clothing and shelter. Moses heard the people of every family wailing, each at the entrance to his tent. The Lord became exceedingly angry and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their forefathers? Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me, give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. This is how you're going to, to treat me. Put me to death right now. If I have found favor in your eyes, you do not let me face my own room. 
there were many of the children of Israel who were not happy. And now we see Moses wasn't happy as well. He was troubled by the grumbling of the people. And Mo Moses was overwhelmed by the duties of leadership. Moses can, can see the need, but he didn't see any solution for the problem. Moses is telling the Lord that if you are slowly taking my life an inch at a time, then just put me to death right now. When the Lord tells Moses that meat will be provided, Moses expresses his doubt. But Moses said, here I am among 600,000 men on foot. You see, that's not counting women and children, so how many were there? And you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord has ways of helping and providing that we do not always see or know. The manna that God had been providing was something new. And think about it. It was there in the morning. They were to gather enough for one day. When the sun came out, it dried up just like dew dries up. And the next morning it was there again. Very interesting. When Jesus asked the disciples about food for the crowd of people, all they had, all they could see was five loaves of bread and two small fish. Yet Jesus multiplied that bread and fish and fed 5,000 people, and that doesn't count women and children. Yes, our Lord is able to provide. We too may be looking at inflation and the economy and wonder what's coming tomorrow. We may, there may be people who have doubted God's ability to provide. And yet, as Moses does some complaining, he is still turning to the Lord in prayer and asking for help. In the middle of his prayer, he says, if I have found favor in your eyes, He was asking for help, and at the same time, he was not telling the Lord what to do. Jesus said it this way, not my will, but your will be done. The Lord invites us to cast our cares on him. And yes, he will answer each of our prayers appropriately. The Lord hears. He heard the complaints of the children of Israel the complaints of Moses. He also heard what they were thinking, what we are thinking. The Lord hears our prayers and praises. He also hears our complaints and grumblings, a thought of rejection of him. The Lord had a message for the children of Israel. The Lord said to Moses, tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will eat it for not just one day or two days or five or 10 or 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? Yes, the Lord provided meat. In this case, it was quail, something similar to chicken. But with that providing, the Lord also disciplined his people. And good discipline is always a way of showing love. Sometimes small children need to understand the value of the word no, for example, and if your no means nothing, then they don't learn what no means, does it? Note well, the Lord heard rejection from many of the people. And so he not only provided meat, 
but he provided so many quail that the people would soon loathe the meat. An old say, saying says, be careful what you ask for. The grass is not always greener on the other side of the fence. St. Paul learned to be content with whatever his circumstances were. And you and I too can learn to be content as well. Years ago, driving on a certain road in southwest Detroit, I had a flat tire and then a month later on that same road I had a second flat tire. It was an aggravation. But was it reason to complain? Not really. God uses the problems of this world to remind you and me that we are sinners. Sinners who still need the Savior. Yes, I had a flat tire. In fact, two of them a month apart. But I was not injured in any way. When I think about it, I can always find some reason, if not many reasons, to be grateful for the Lord who provides for me and watches over me. The Lord heard the complaints and prayers of Moses. He provided help for Moses. The Lord said to Moses, bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there and I will take of the spirit that is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. The Lord provided 70 elders for Mo Moses. The Lord equipped the elders with the Holy Spirit. Later today, and this is the season for it because our seminary had graduation a little over a month ago, today one of those candidates will be ordained and installed at a sister congregation. At some point in the service, fellow pastors will lay their hands on that candidate, symbolizing the imparting of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when we impart the Holy Spirit in that special ceremony, it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't mean less Holy Spirit for me and my fellow pastors, or it didn't mean less Spirit for Moses when that Spirit was shared with the 70 elders. Think about it. When you hear some good news and share it with a friend, that doesn't mean you, you, you've lost part of that news and have less of it. You're actually doubling that news then, aren't you? Uh, some things when they're shared aren't, are not diminished in any way and so the gift of the Spirit was not diminished in any way. The Lord provided help for Moses. The Lord then had a rebuke for Moses for his doubt about God's ability to provide. The Lord answered Moses, is the Lord's arm too short? You will now see whether or not what I say will come true for you. And by asking the question, is the Lord's arm too short? It's another way of saying, is the Lord's power limited? We call the Lord Almighty. Is there anything the Lord cannot do? All things are possible with our God. God created the world in six days. And our creation is testimony to God's power and wisdom as well. We now have satellites equipped with Earth spacecraft equipped with telescopes that go beyond our atmosphere and we see even clearer the vastness of the cosmos and God's wisdom and power in all of this. We see that power and wisdom at work in life of Jesus as well. He used his power and wisdom to rescue us from our sins. He used, the Lord used his power and wisdom to answer the children of Israel and Moses. And all of this demonstrates God's love. 
And keep in mind that when God expresses his love, it not only provides what we need, it also disciplines to keep us close to him. Keep us close to him. We can thank God then for his love that provides for us and disciplines us to keep us close to him and when eternity comes for us, we will have all eternity to thank him for what he provided for us while we were here on earth. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all our understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now to sing the offering hymn, hymn 441, verses 1 and 2. confidently with all our needs, trusting you to supply them. We come to you for food, clothing, shelter, good health, steady employment, protection, and all the things that we require. Because we still have our sinful flesh, we confess we are in danger of desiring more than is sufficient and of striving for things that are not good for us. We therefore leave the final selection of all our earthly blessings to your wisdom and holy will. We ask that you would especially watch over the elderly among us, the widows, the fatherless, the injured and infirm, the disabled, the poor, the downcast, and the oppressed. Supply them according to their various needs. Oh, forgive our sins. Especially forgive us all those times when we, your children, complained about our lot in life and forgot your many blessings. Forgive all those times we were dissatisfied and wanted more than was sufficient for us. Forgive all those times we did not share our abundance with those in need. Forgive all those times we neglected to thank and praise your holy name. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Lead our entire nation to repentance, that it may escape your wrath and displeasure. Heavenly Father, we are but strangers and pilgrims here on earth but you have promised us everlasting life in heaven through your dear Son. Therefore, through the Holy Spirit, feed our souls on Christ, who is the true bread of life. Make the gospel of Christ the joy of our hearts, and through it increase our faith and strengthen our hold on eternal life. 
Father, we know that you have forgiven all our sins and supplied all our needs. Therefore, unto you we raise our voices of praise and prayer. In Jesus' name, we also join in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with hymn 457. <clears throat> Almighty God, unto your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from above, that your word as becomes it may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and, 
reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Final hymn is hymn 575. 